Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today we're talking about submarines. So submarines came up for testing in random battles with the current patch. And I was excited for this because I wanted to see how submarines could perform in a 12v12 game mode with 12 players on both sides. And not like what we've seen before with either in co-op or ranked or in their own ser uh, special game mode. But on the live server in the main battle type with players. So, played a lot of them this week, played a whole lot on stream last night, it was probably about 60% subs on stream last night, very good stream, very interesting games as well in the subs, and I've jotted down my main takeaways from this half a week of playing mostly submarines and water warships, and that's what we're going to be talking about here today. So, just getting started from the beginning, first off, it's a lot more complicated than what many claim, a, a lot more. You have to have the right positioning, you have to be stealthy and try not to get detected at all, because if you do, whew, we'll get into that in a moment. Um, the, the torpedoes, the, the homing on battleships is almost laughable in many cases, and the homing on cruisers, cruisers and destroyers, it's much harder, but of course... On those ships, it's much harder to get the double ping in the first place to get that insane homing. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about cruisers here in a moment. But there's a lot that goes into getting into a good position in a sub to be able to get your torpedoes off. You can't just launch these torpedoes at the bow or the stern of any ship, or even if they're angled, and just be like, Alright, I got a double ping on them. I can forget about it. No. First off, you got to maintain that ping, because unless you're right on top of them, there's no way you're going to be able to just let that ping ride and let, and let the torpedoes get to the target without trying to maintain that ping. And that is, too, if they don't pop their damage con. If they pop their damage con, you got to hope there's enough time for the damage con to go down and then you to be able to ping them again. And when talking about cruisers and destroyers, there generally is, because most cruisers and destroyers have just a few seconds on their damage con on like battleships which like we have the American battleships which have a 20 second damage con and then the freaking CVs over here with their multiple minute damage con uh, but you gotta maintain that ping you gotta also hope that there's no island in the way because the torpedoes go straight at them and by straight at them I mean they don't care what's in the way another ship a friendly ship a corpse an island they don't care they're gonna run straight straight into it so there's all that that you got to take into place. And of course, you know, what depth are you at? Are you shallow enough to get the torps off and then not have to go to the surface? Or are you so deep that they got to have a multiple kilometer run up to where they can get to the surface, to where they can hit the ship, so forth and so on. So it, it, it's not as simple, I can promise you, as what you've been reading around Reddit, YouTube, and Facebook, or wherever you get your Water Warships news from. The ideal situation is to get on the flank to where you have a lot of flat broadside to ping and launch your torpedoes at. If that's the case, then yeah, it's pretty easy to get hits on targets there. But if the target moves at all, or is paying attention at all, and isn't in you know the middle of a major gunfight fighting multiple ships, most ships can fairly easily dodge these torps. Now, again, if you do get a double ping on a cruiser or a destroyer, the, the homing does go hard. But, again, you have to maintain that ping, like I said beforehand, and getting a double ping on a target that's as maneuverable as a DD or a cruiser isn't an easy task. Now, I'm sure there's some Das Boot fans out there that are very good at doing this right now, but the average player, it's a pretty difficult thing to do. Now, am I saying, is it impossible? No. I'm saying it's something that can't normally be done on a regular basis unless someone's got a very predictable movement pattern or such so that's the first takeaway the second takeaway is battleships battleships are like almost completely fine unless you are in a terrible position and not moving or if you're distracted so on battleships the torpedoes stop homing at around 2.1 kilometers well not around 2.1 kilometers exactly at 2.1 kilometers so if you're paying attention so Paying attention to the part of your ship that's highlighted. Paying attention to the indicator that's showing you the, the direction of the ping. You know now what part of the ship you tor those torpedoes are coming from and where those torpedoes are coming from. So, point your stern or bow toward that, that ping indicator and wait. 
Or if you're feeling really confident, keep sailing and see if they're actually sending torps or if they're just pinging you because they want to ping you. And you can see the torpedoes, they're coming at you, they're 2.1 kilometers away. Turn. It's pretty simple. And if the double ping is still a thing, pop damage con. And now you're going to get like a 4,000 damage torpedo hit. It's not really a big issue for battleships. I, I tried targeting them a lot in the subs last night, or well, this night, and my, my hit rate was probably in like the freaking 20%. Because most of the battleships I ran across were pretty aware of their surroundings and doing a good job of making sure they didn't eat random torps, so yeah. Now, of course, if you get a battleship that's sitting completely still, isn't paying attention, then yeah, you're going to wreck the guy's face. But if they're moving, maneuvering, paying attention, not in a bad situation where they can't um, turn in or away from the, from your torps, then yeah, they're going to eat it. But in most cases, they're probably the best class to be in with there's a submarine in the game. Plus, they have the longest range um, airstrikes out of most of the other classes. So you got that going on too. So now... If you do get spotted in a submarine, which is probably going to happen unless you just stay 15 kilometers away from the from the battle the entire time, you are screwed. You are so screwed. You're screwed more in a submarine than you are in a normal ship when you get spotted. Like, in a normal ship when you get spotted, um, there was one instance where I had an island between me and the ships that were hydroing me. But guess what? A lot of these ships had ASW aircraft, like most ships in the game do, so they could still drop their ASW over the island and hit my sub. Plus, too, like, when you're being hydroed and sonared, um, or spotted in general, your dive time gets depleted at three times the rate. And, oh my god, it doesn't sound that bad, but when you're in battle and you had five minutes of dive time and now, uh, a DD sailed over you for a couple of seconds, and now you have two minutes of dive time now. Um, that sucks, because when that runs out and you got a surface, you are dead. Even beneath the surface, you're, you're not safe completely, and this is what, is what really perplexes me. That's a lot of people are commenting things like, well, they're invisible and invincible under the water. Like, hell they are. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has ASW now, and guess what? A whole lot of players don't like submarines, so when one gets spotted, they're all going to dogpile on it, as you should with any target in the game. You know, dogpile on him, focus him down, get him out of the battle, but submarines evaporate under concentrated fire much quicker than any other class in the game because their health is minuscule. And in order to avoid this, they have to go down to their maximum depth. And still there, if you're being focused by a good chunk of the team, I'd say four more ships, you're probably still going to lose half of your health. But if you were any shallower, you, you'd, you, you'd, you, you would be dead. You'd be dead dead. So, yeah, it, the second you get spotted, run, crash dive. Don't try and stick it out because you won't be able to. I got lucky a couple times on stream, but I got not so lucky far more times. <laughs> Um, now, cruisers, cruisers, cruisers are, I think, where there's a lot of balancing issues at right now. So, like I mentioned earlier, the devs really want us to go after cruisers and destroyers and submarines now. And the homing goes hard on cruisers when they get double pinged. Now, the deactivation range for the homing is so much further out on cruisers than it is with um, destroyers. But cruisers are a very diverse class of ships. We have light cruisers with good rudder shift time. Uh, we have heavy cruisers with decent rudder shift time. And then we have large cruisers with not the best rudder shift time. And of course, I'm speaking in, 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 in general terms. You know, th th there's the oddball here and there that has you know, fantastic rudder shift time, even though it's, it's a large cruiser. And there's the odd light cruiser that has a terrible rudder shift time, even though it's a light cruiser. I'm just speaking in general terms. So those ships all share, as far as I can tell, as far as I'm uh, aware in terms of the homing, those ships all share the same degree of homing to where a cruiser with, let, let's say, I don't know, a five second or a four second or a two second rudder shift time has to deal with the same level of homing as a cruiser with 10 seconds of rudder shift time. That's a big difference. So when you get that double ping, you get the double homing, but also you get the ability to citadel the ship with your torpedoes if you hit their citadel with the torps. 
So, yeah, it sucks to be a, a cruiser with poor maneuverability when there's a submarine in game because now you have to essentially drop what you're doing and try to dodge these very, very, very hard homing, very, very, very hard hitting torpedoes too. So that's where my current issue is at right now. Um, like I said before, my, my main issue was damage con being the thing that used to take away the torpedoes homing. After playing the submarines, I'm not so sure that's a huge issue. Now, for a, looking at it from Battleship player's perspe perspective, you got two, two or three ships HE spamming you. You're holding your damage con for that, but now you've been pinged by uh, a submarine. There's potentially torpedoes coming at you that if you don't remove the ping and you can't dodge, you're going to get like 20k in Citadel damage, which sucks big time. So you pop the damage con, and the two ships he spamming you, of course, aren't going to spot or aren't going to stop he spamming you because, well, now you've popped your damage con. Now they can get permanent fires on you, and you have to use the damage con to negate the torpedo homing, and you still get like 15 or like 10,000 damage in torpedo damage, which equally sucks. Um, but after playing submarines. I stopped going after battleships unless they were the only thing available to me because it was just so annoying to try and get hits on them, especially, again, the ones that are paying attention. So I started going after cruisers and DDs first, and then that's when my damage started to really, you know, get up there rather than going after, you know, what most ships go after to get a lot of damage, which is battleships. Um, and you know, ideally, you should be going after cruisers and DDs first because they have a much bigger game impact than battleships. Battleships are great at, you know, provi providing artillery support, um, tanking, and, you know, potentially blapping a ship here and there. But DDs cap caps, cruisers cap caps, and run DD interference, A interference. And DDs do a, a whole lot of this too, of course. Um, they're kind of like the Swiss Army knife of the of, 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 of the game currently, except for tanking, unless you're like, you know, Kabarosk. But, um, yeah. So it's what you should be doing anyway, but... It's kind of weird. It's going against, you know, many years of playing the game and what you, you usually do when you want to farm damage. But the homing is just so much better against cruisers and, and DDs. It's kind of hysterical when you see how hard these torpedoes turn sometimes going after uh, DDs and, and cruisers. So that's where the issue is with me right now is that the cruisers are really screwed if you get a double sonar ping on you and the torpedoes get launched, and you're just not in a maneuverable enough cruiser to dodge it. And then, too, now you're having to you know, turn hard in a cruiser that can easily be blacked by other ships. So that kind of sucks. But the thing is, too, even with this being the first week they're available for testing, and what it would probably be their most popular week, I never ran into a four-sub-aside game. It was all two. Two subs per side. And I think that really is as much as should be in a random battle. Two per side. I think that should be the maximum. Any more than that, and it's going to be far too much on the field. In terms of pings and having to dodge these torpedoes left, right, and center. At that point, there's four um, on the match at a time. That's just too much in my opinion. But two per side, I think, is, is ideal. One per side... I mean, really, you, barely, you don't even notice that they're there. Two per side, you may run across one if you're not on the flank that um, that they spawned on, you know. But in terms of battle impact, they don't seem to have much more of an impact than your average DD. The most damage I, I had during the night was 81,000 damage. And that's from going after cruisers and, and, and DDs. And a lot of times, you know, you have to go after ships that are distracted in, in, in engagement because if you go after a cruiser that's by himself and knows that you're there, you're going to have a very fun time trying to hit him. So you're going after the ones that are already engaged with other ships or distracted and, you know, they're losing health and you might finish them off. And sure, you know, you get the double ping on them. Like I, I double pinged a Des Moines that had a 20k health left and by the time my torpedo is there he only had 10k health left so yeah sure I, I quadruple citadeled him for 
10k damage, but yeah, I finished him off for sure. Now, I did have quite a few 3 and 4 kill games, um, but a fair amount of this was fighting the other submarines, which is freaking fun. I really do love that. that. That's a very fun aspect of subs. But yeah, in, in terms of damage, they're, they're really not bringing in a lot of damage. They're really not... You know, going out there and chunking a battleship for 40,000 damage every game. And again, sure, you know, you can do that every every now and then when you run across someone that's distracted. The main thing is, cruisers are where most of the balancing issues are cropping up now, in my mind at least, and from what I've experienced at least. The, the, the class itself, the cruiser class itself, is far too diverse of a class to have one homing status for all of it. And I think it cuts off at like 340 meters with the double ping, which on the game scale is nothing. So you have to work with that homing status and that those homing parameters for the Smolensk all the way up to the Stalingrad. As far as I know, and I went back and I checked the dev blogs, it doesn't appear that they gave a separate homing status to the supercruisers. So, from the smallest cruiser up to the largest cruiser in the game, they all have the same homing status, and that isn't going to work out well, in my mind at least. So, they need to go in and either by base rudder shift time, or by classification of light, medium, heavy, and then super or large cruiser, they need to give those individual subsets of cruisers a different homing um, mechanic or, or status or a cutoff range or whatever you want to call it. They, they, they need to tweak the homing for the individual subgroups of cruisers in, in the game. That's the main thing right now. For me, again, battleships, the, the worry about overloading the battleships damage con isn't really an issue in my mind because most submarine players are going to realize, hey, I can sit here for 10 minutes and ping this battleship all day, but it's a lot easier to go after that cruiser over there than this battleship just because the homing is so much better on that ship um now the cruiser damage con i think we're going to wind up being in the same boat as we were at the bb's damage con to now where it's kind of overloaded i i still think maybe it should be on a different consumable like degaussing or something like that earlier i was speak, speaking mostly about the battleships uh, damage con if you weren't aware of that or i might have been rambling a little bit too much but that's what i meant like battleship terms damage con i think is fine but maybe a different consumable like degaussing with a set number of charges per game, like maybe starting with four base, five with uh, with superintendent. Who knows? It, it, it could be unlimited. It could be limited. I'm just spitballing here. Anyway, guys, that's my first impressions on these submarines being in um, random battles. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. I would encourage you guys to play the submarines for yourself. You can get your hands on them in the, uh, in, in the rental period. Um, try them out for yourselves. Get in the battle with them. Play a few games at them. Get to see how the mechanics work before you jump on one bat bandwagon one way or the other. Um, just remember that people can cherry pick clips, you know. Um, I'm sure there's probably a few crazy clips on the subreddit, on YouTube, on the forums or whatever going around right now. Uh, but just know that honestly it's not like that most of the time with any class in the game, let alone just subs. Just keep that in mind, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. One way to 30,000 subs. We just passed 29,100 yesterday, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Hope to, ca hope to catch you guys in the next one.